युंता प्रविश्य मम वाच मिमां प्रसुप्तान संजीवय तकिल शक्ति धरा स्वधाम ना अन्याम शहस्त चरण श्रवणा त्वगादीन प्राणान नमो भगवते पुरुषाय तुभ्यम कथांचना स्मृते यस्मिन दुष्करम सुकरम भवे विस्मृते विपरीतम स्याद श्री चैतन्य नमामितम Hare Krishna, welcome to our Srimad Bhagavatam class. We are in the ninth chapter of the first canto. So we have done, I think, 20 verses, the first 20 verses. This is where Pandavas and Krishna, they all go to meet whom? Bhishma Pitama and all great sages from everywhere have come to see Bhishma. And Bhishma welcomes all of them, Bhishma Pitama welcomes all of them speaks kind words out of affection and then we discuss this most important section 12, 13, 14, 15, 16 and 17 verses where Bhishma Pitama will pacify, he pacifies and encourages the Pandavas and teaches them about how to handle suffering, how to tolerate suffering. And now we have reached the 18 to 24 section which is where Bhishma Pitama is now going to glorify Krishna as the Supreme Personality of God and we have studied up to 20 verses where Lord Krishna is glorified beautifully by Bhishma. Today we'll start with 21st verse and uh, you can repeat after me and then one of you will have to read the uh, translation and perfect. Who will read today? You have a microphone? Yes, Prabhu. Hello, Prabhu can read. You have the microphone with you? Yes. Please respond. Verse number 21. <clears throat> Sarvatmanaha Samadrisho Sarvatmanaha Samadrisho Advaya Syanaha Krite Tatkritam Mati Vaishamyam Niravadya Syanak Vachi Being the absolute personality of Godhead, He is present in everyone's heart. He is equally kind to everyone. And he is free from the false ego of differentiation. Therefore, whatever he does is free from material in inability. He is equibalanced. Yes. So we can read the purport. Because he is absolute, there is nothing different from him. He is Kaivalya. There is nothing except himself. Everything and everyone is the manifestation of his energy. And thus he is present everywhere by his energy, being non-different from it. The sun is identified with every inch of the sun rays and every molecular particle of the rays. Similarly, the Lord is distributed by his different energies. He is Paramatma or the super soul present in everyone as the supreme guidance. And therefore he is, and therefore he is already the chariot driver and counsel of all living beings. When he, therefore, exhibits himself as chariot driver of Arjuna, there is no change in his exalted position. It is the power of devotional service only that demonstrates him as the chariot driver or the messenger. Since he has nothing to do with the material conception of life, because he is absolute spiritual identity, there is for him no superior or inferior action. Being the absolute personality of Godhead, he has no false ego, and so he does not identify himself with anything different from him. The material conception of ego is equibalanced in him. He does not feel, therefore, inferior by becoming the chariot driver of his pure devotee. It is the glory of the pure devotee that only he can bring about service from the affectionate Lord. Yes. This is a, a verse where Bhishma is saying, Our Lord is present in everyone's heart. Lord is present everywhere. So this is the way, this entire section 18 to 24 <laughs> verse is glorifying Krishna. And in this particular verse, he is saying, oh, the Lord is present in every person's heart, every living entity's heart. And Srila Prabhupada also in the purport, he says, Krishna is present everywhere by his energy. And his energy being non-different from, basically Krishna is everywhere. And we have to learn to see Krishna in every aspect of this creation then we will be making a spiritual advancement. So Bhagavatam, what Bhagavatam teaches us is Krishna is a person, he has an identity and we approach him. 
but he is also present everywhere so what devotees do we do like this we have our life right which is filled with problems so our life is temporary our problems are also temporary but they occupy our mind completely so that is a reality which we are not demeaning it is a reality we have your anxiety all of your anxiety so that is one reality but there is another reality which is independent of us do you understand what i am saying there is a reality which doesn't care for your existence there is something which is eternal whether you live die whatever happens to you that reality will always remain so i understanding two 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 concepts we are talking about one is my world my problem my suffering second is the reality which is eternal which always exists generally where are we living in our world so what bhagavatam is teaching us is spend some time every day in the second reality a reality which is eternal which is happening every day which always exists which is basically very krishna krishna is eternal then when you spend some time in that space then come back to your world of suffering you will get strength because you will see hope you will feel that there is something more than my life also otherwise our problems will occupy us completely so whenever you get a chance you need to see how there is something which doesn't change that is eternal reality our reality is which is constantly changing so what you can do every day you can spend some time reading bhagavatam or remembering krishna and when for example you are traveling in the train or you are going somewhere that time also you can see you have to learn to see how there is eternity everywhere there is the principle of something within all all this changing thing there is something which doesn't change then when we connect to that unchanging principle then when we are affected by change we will be peaceful because we are connected to something which is beyond destruction is it very technical don't understand difficult to understand uh, when we are occupied with our problem we just can't imagine that can be a reality see simple example if you die now god forbid you should not die but i'm saying will it make any difference to the world no the bollywood movies will go on ipl matches will go on nobody will care for us but we have become so preoccupied with our identity with our problems therefore bhagavatam is appealing to us there is another reality connect to that okay when you are traveling also you can see how everything is changing but some i give an example i was going to borivelli few days back for one lunch some one fun of my friends house for lunch so when i was traveling so i boarded the train now i was going in the train after almost 6 months i was traveling in the local train so i took the ticket it was a morning time not much crowded so i boarded the train i said i took a deep breath i said okay let me now <clears throat> see this let me now remember the first time i boarded a train local train because i am generally present i try to observe so it was when i was 9 years old i had come from village i was in mumbai my father was in railways and we were traveling so i was trying to recall that incident so then i was thinking i was trying to remember everything and then that was 1982 so now how many years have passed 42 So I was thinking, in forty-two years, what has happened? Everything is same, but everything has changed. As we were going in the train, I was looking at the stations outside, Mahalakshmi, over there, and Elphiston Road was not there. Pravadi, <laughs> and then after that, uh, Jogeshwari, there was Ram Mandir, yeah. and I saw station is same. Rather, I saw some two girls, beggars entering. They were singing. They wanted money. I gave them some change. Then I remember how when I was a young boy traveling in the train, my father was a big shot in the train railways. So I used to have a pass. You know, that pass you could travel anywhere <laughs> in any train. So I used to, so I was recalling how I used to travel and I used to see beggars. No, now also there are beggars. Then I saw one blind man 
somebody is helping in cross i said oh i remember one incident where i helped one blind man when i was in college everything is happening the same nothing has changed all the everything has changed i saw one uh, poster ranveer kapoor was doing something some notan ki was doing i was seeing that photo yeah. so i saw wow 1982 was remembering going with my father and i saw at cinema poster of rishi kapoor his father <laughs> so now his son is jumping around so like that another 40 years will pass people will go on zindagi ke mele duniya mein kam na honge so the something is cha- not changing as everything is changing so we when we connect to that and we enter that space we become peaceful we realize are mai to mar jaunga khatam ho jayega sab kuch बस कुछ चलता रहेगा सब कुछ तो दिस काइंड ऑफ मेडिटेशन इज नीडेड समटाइम्सिंग So there was the whole history. This is South Bombay had a lot of history. There was some king ruling. I forgot all the names. You know, everything was there. Everything has changed. So we need to remember that that principle it doesn't change. Like you know, when I joined the temple, before I joined the ashram, my friends, you know, they used to go to liquor bar and they used to frequently visit all this. So because being their friend, I used to go with them. I used to drink seven up or orange juice. But I was Hare Krishna devotee. So when they knew I'm joining, they said, "Okay, last time should come with us for a party." <laughs> so there are two very famous bars near my house in Kolaba. One was called Gokul Bar and Restaurant, and second was Vrindavan Bar and Restaurant. <laughs> <laughs> so they used to say, "One day we go to Gokul, second day we go to Vrindavan." <laughs> so they said, "Let's go to Gokul. Let's go. No, no, no. Vrindavan chutney." Nine, nine. Hey, our last time. This is the last supper. Uh, last time we are meeting. Because they knew that I am joining. The sadhu banana wala. Shoot the game. I said, "Man, I am." So, okay. Then they made me force me to go for a movie. They said, "So, last time movie, they gave us. After that, you go. Your journey, our journey, is different. Come and enjoy with us." So I went with them to watch a movie at Maratha Mandir. Mm-hmm. Then after a few months, it was Dilwale Dulhaniya Lejaan. <laughs> so after that, I came out. After three months, I was going for a program with Gorang Prabhu in the taxi, and as they were going to Sagar Arthur Road, and when the taxi was going, I looked and I was smiling, looking at the poster. Gorang Prabhu, what are you looking at? I said, Prabhu ji, this movie, na, the last movie that I have seen. Okay, how is the movie? Good. Okay. We went. After six months, we were going for another program to RBI, and the and I saw that poster. After one year, we were going somewhere. That poster I saw. After two years, I saw. After three years, I saw. And even recently, I was coming from somewhere. I saw, "Sorry, I have seen the poster." I thought, "The theater is closed. I see, I have seen the poster." Then I asked someone, "But you are going to see it for 25 years?" I said, "Really? 25 years is going to be going on? The past has changed. Everything has changed. So many people have come, born, died. Earthquake happened. Terrorist attack happened. Floods happened. So many things happened. But the movie is going on." This is not to encourage you to go and watch that movie, <laughs> <laughs> but the point is when everything is just like this movie is there and everything is changing. Similarly, in our life, you see so many things are changing, but something is not changing. What is that? That meditation devotee should have constantly. I have one friend, Raguna Dujay Prabhu. He like things like me. We discuss a lot of these things. So he sends me select videos. You know, like he sent me one video. Of 1920, we made in 1921. 115 year old people are sitting, and they are talking about their childhood, and they are talking about when their children, how their grandfathers, grandparents used to take care of them. So I remember Raghunath Bajaj. He stays in Melbourne. So when I went to Australia, we spent time. We were watching the video, and we were thinking they are talking about life of 1780s. 1750s. So we were entering a space beyond the present. See, there are people who lived on the same land, same earth. 
they breathe the same air, they drank the same water, they walked, you know, they had their aspirations. They had their struggles, they had their anxieties, they had their joys, they had their excitement. So we, there is something we share with eternity. And we need to connect to that principle. This body and the surroundings and the circumstances of our lives are so fleeting. The children you have, the parents you had, this is all according to Bhagavatam paradigm, it's all fleeting. This has no basis. But we don't belong here. We need to see something beyond this. I remember the, when I was in college, this is the first time I had an experience of this connecting to an eternity principle. I had taken a book from the library and our library is open all 365 days. So Sunday, one Sunday, I went to the library, I took this book called My 40 Years in India by Sir Edmund Cox. He was a British police officer. For 40 years, he was serving as a police inspector in Mumbai. So he was in Bivandi area. So he writes about life in Bombay in 1840, 1850, 1860. You know how people were living, how they were struggling. And as I'm reading in 1992, I'm reading about life of 150 years ago. And I remember at one point of time, I just felt I was transported to an eternal dimension. And I remember time froze for me. And he writes that yesterday I went to Bandra station. He talks about Bandra and it was so crowded. I am sure there were more than 85 to 100 people. <laughs> <laughs> and he's talking about a very crowded Bandra railway station with 100 people, that was very, very crowded for him in 1860s, 1870s. So, if you see, so now the station is still there, people are still traveling, but things have changed. So, we need to see something else, the eternal principle we have to connect. And when we connect to that principle, no, then what will happen? Then even in your midst of all suffering, you will see the positive side. You will see how everything is temporary. And because you are reading Bhagavatam and chanting Hare Krishna, you will feel peaceful. Everybody wants peace, right? Shri Prabhupada lecture I was hearing today morning. This is a lecture in 1968 he is giving. He's saying, everybody comes to me saying, I want peace of mind, Swamiji. I was thinking 1968 also people wanted peace of mind. And now also in 2024 also people are looking for peace of mind. How many more births you have to go through this hankering for peace of mind? It is here. Just understand and connect to this principle beyond our body, our mind, our suffering. And then everything becomes auspicious. And then we see from Krishna's point of view. And then I've seen devotees who connect to Krishna through Bhagavatam, through Holy Name. They experience that eternity principle. Then even in the midst of suffering, they are blissful. I've seen it. Like I, one classic example was we went to Mayapur Yatra. Mornings, 5 o'clock, we left temple, we took a flight, everything was comfortable, you know, plane is also AC, airport is AC, from Calcutta airport, we had a nice air-conditioned bus, so I think 35 of us went in bus, and there are another 35 people who had left one day before in the morning by train, and they were supposed to reach same time as we reach, but their train landed up in some big mess because the some trains were cancelled and their train had no water, and it got delayed and lot of struggle and the prasad they had taken got spoiled. Lot of suffering. So they reached 12 hours later than us. So then the yatra began. I was thinking they must be miserable. <clears throat> and I spoke to each of those 35 people, including the elderly Matajis also. Everybody was blissful. They were more spiritually conscious than us. So then I asked each one of them, what if you're not miserable, what if you're not uncomfortable? And each one of them said this, Prabhuji, we were all together, we were chanting, we were discussing each other, realization we were sharing, we were reading Chaitanya Charitamra. They were in an amazing consciousness. They were together with each other. And I was thinking, from one point of view, if you see, they were miserable. But because they were connected to Krishna, they were blissful. Because they were connecting to things, principle which is eternal, they were connecting to Lord Chaitanya, they were connecting to Holy Name. So we need to see things from a broader perspective. 
this is not artificial positive thinking this is this is actually the reality actually ultimately you know you have to choose your reality because there always be there will be different theories right there is a group of people who will be convinced that kejriwal is innocent they will have all the evidence and there is a group of people who will convince you that kejriwal is a fraud ultimately with all the evidences from both there is no objective to you have to choose only ultimately ultimately you know the reality it's so confusing so what happens when you come to hari krishna the strength to choose a reality that will help you come closer to krishna becomes easy you get the strength to choose a reality i was coming for mangalarti rushing for mangalarti i saw one brahmachari blissfully putting tilak singing hari krishna smiling i looked at him and my heart was beaming with so much joy who on earth morning 4:30 would be singing so happily the whole world outside is sleeping so i was feeling happy just smiling so one of my other friends in the ashram he looked at me and he said kya smile kar raha hai i said look at him kya blissful hai how krishna conscious is i was appreciating him and his krishna consciousness so this brahmachari friend of mine he was little cynical he very difficult to impress him. he said hey, i say oh uh, seriously <laughs> So what do you mean I say? अरे पुराण देखो कृष्ण माय है वो कृष्णा इस पर कृष्णाइस्ट इस सिंगिंग स्माइलिंग तो दिस फॉर इम्मीडिएटली सेड आई नो हिम वेरी वेल यू नो ही हैड कॉन्स्टिपेशन लास्ट वन वीक लास्ट नाइट ही टुक अ लैक्सेटिव एंड इस टमक इस क्लियर ना सो इस फीलिंग रिलीफ दैट इज व्हाई सिंगिंग हरे कृष्ण � You don't know what is the actual truth. It the actual truth could be that he is blissful because he is remembering Krishna. See, the problem is, you know, we all have, we all have this at least in us. We have a, we have that mind, wicked mind, which wants to keep us in material world. But if you choose the reality of eternity, and you choose to see facts in a certain way, then you will go back to Krishna. Otherwise, you cannot go back. If we don't learn to see Krishna in this temporary world of suffering, if we don't learn to see eternal principle here, then you cannot go to the eternal world. You have to see good here. I'll give a simple example. February twenty, year two thousand fifteen, was a historical day in Islam. You know what happened that day? Something extraordinary happened on twentieth of February. Ab internet na mat dekho. Twentieth February twenty fifteen. There was. Kirtan Mela happening in Mayapur. It was the last day of Kirtan Mela. Thousands of devotees are chanting and dancing in front of Panchatattva. And suddenly, the Panchatattva they started crying. Tears are coming from their eyes, and everybody is watching, taking videos. It became sensational news. Panchatattva is crying. Hari Bol. So everybody's faith in the holy name, faith in Lord Chaitanya, faith in Patadupa increased. But you know there are people who will give scientific explanation. Yeah. They said this is actually condensation because the deities are all metal. Metal is very cool, and there are thousands of devotees. So a lot of heat was generated, so there was condensation, so the tears came. Now I was given this choice of what to believe. It was condensation or it was Panchatattva crying. What is the truth? You will say, "No, no, probably scientific one. It's not a blind following me one." Okay, I see it like this. Scientific, what is it actually? See, any of scripture say that Panchatattva is always crying in ecstasy when devotees are chanting and dancing. So they are anyway crying, and anyway tears are coming from their eyes. But today we got a chance to see that, and they use the condensation to reveal to us how they are crying. So they reveal to us through condensation. You may say, "No, no, no," but uh, actually, they should do something by which all atheists will be convinced. No, they will not do that. If, if actually they had done something extraordinary, like let's say they had Panchatattva had jumped out of the altar and started dancing. <laughs> <laughs> so the Panchatattva altar se bar aage, saath foot, or national lagye sabke saath. So then, really, the world would be convinced, right? We would think like that. Or is there some miracle? Karo? ऐसा नहीं करेंगे तो, because that if he does, then he is not fulfilling the statement of Bhagavad Gita. 
He says in the fourth chapter, he atamam prapadhyante tam sadeva bhajam and he reciprocates with everyone. He also has to reciprocate with the atheistic people. So there are people who don't accept God. So he has to he has to present himself in such a way that even they get reasons to discount his existence. That is why he will not do, he will not jump out of the altar and start jumping. Even actually, even if he does that, still people will not believe. Kushna Kushto Red Teri Ayagai. I'm telling you, when Krishna did show his universal form to Duryodhan, Duryodhan said it is a magic trick. He could not believe. So there are people always who will discount God. Ultimately, it boils down to your choice. Lord is anyway crying in ecstasy. And I say he used condensation to reveal to us. Okay, there's a famous pastime of Lord Jagannath, Jagannath Puri, there was a Ganesh Bhakta. He came to Jagannath Puri. He, is, he, is, he had said that I will not go to Jagannath Puri because I love my Lord Ganesh. So the king told him, no, Jagannath will, will reveal to you Ganesh Roop. So he saw, but he didn't get any darshan. So he was leaving that time. There was Nani Yatra going on and the paint of Jagannath was, uh, was washed off. And that Sani Yatra, suddenly the whole figure of Jagannath appeared like Ganesh because of the paint being disfigured. So then he saw, he got Darshan of Ganesh and he became very satisfied. So now Lord Jagannath used that paint and that past and that episode, that situation to show the Ganesh. See, so the Lord will not, the Lord will also take care of those who don't want to believe that he is the Lord. They will always say, no, paint is a pani se ho gaya. Thik hai, wo bhi khush. You know, Krishna, when he left this world, he left his material body. You know that? Under short arrow. Why Krishna left this material body? So that the atheistic people, they can always say that Krishna is not God. But those are it, Bhagavatam, Shukdev Goswami, I explained that in the past classes. He gives so many logical explanations how Krishna cannot die. And then he gives different proof how he brought the children of his guru from the abode of Yamra. He defeated the god of death. He gives five, six examples. So like that. So the point is you have to choose the reality. And if you choose the eternal reality, you will be blissful. You will see Krishna here and you will see Krishna in your suffering also. And you will be able to happily tolerate your situations. Whatever condition you are in, you will be like, abhi ho gaya then, going back to Krishna. So this is a, this is very, very important for us. Okay, I'll give a classic example. Ram Naomi Day, our uh, Radha Gopinath Prabhu gave class evening. It was such a fantastic Ram Naomi class. And whenever Ram Kata happened, it is said that Anumanji comes and listens. Now Anumanji is there. Sometimes you can see him. Some devotees can see, sometimes you cannot see. But Hanumanji comes for every Ram Katha. This is a blessing he took from Lord Ram. So when Radha Gopinath Prabhu was speaking that ecstatic Ram Katha, Hanumanji was sitting there. Hanumanji had come for the class. And Hanumanji anyway there in the next to Prabhupada. But Hanumanji also manifested in a different way. It was the class got over late. He came to the room at 10.30 in the night. Radha Gopinath Prabhu. So we couldn't talk much, went to sleep. But Hanumanji came next day morning, 7 o'clock. What happened? Like something extraordinary happened. I was talking to Baldev Prabhu at the dining table, and uh, which is in the floor where we all stay. And last 25 years, I'm in the ashram. Radha Gopinath Prabhu is in the last 35 years in the ashram. And we have never seen a huge monkey from nowhere started climbing down the stairs because terrace and terrace came Michi Amara third floor. And the monkey is walking Aram says Sidi Chadki Nichi Ara. And we were like, what? He can't say a monkey. I've never seen a monkey here in 25 years. And he comes coolly walking down. Atamarkusamjani Anumanji are Bandaraki with I see Kitesi Bandaraki. Mere room and Gujagamani Chapal Luta. And Bandar coolly jara. We walked straight and I'm walking behind him and he stopped and he turned right. Right to Radha Gopinath Prabhu's room. And he was there inside and the room was open. And he looked at Radha Gopinath Prabhu and he waved at him. And I think he said, very good class yesterday. Oh, oh. <laughs> I didn't hear him say that, but I saw him wave at him. And Radha Gopinath Prabhu, <laughs> and then he, and then he turned back. He looked at me with a chapel in my hand. 
एंड सडनली अकॉर्ड रियलाइजेशन अरे बाप रे एक कल क्लास दिया और आज यहाँ आ गए और उनको हरे कृष्णा बोल के जा रहे तो चप्पल में फेंक दिया एंड मंकी केम स्ट्रेट टू मी एंड मेरा जो काफ मसल को ऐसा मारा saying that relax chill you know don't don't get excited and then he went back climbed the stairs very coolly just as if nothing had happened jaise niche aaya seedha gaya gopinath pur ke room ke udhar unko wait kiya piche aaya wapas upar chada gaya never seen again i said gopinath bro kya ho gaya kya class dekha kal aapne kyunki he spoke from sundarkand and he had explained how sundarkand is called sundarkand so the poko ji the anuman ji aage said praj bihari हनुमान जी कुछ नहीं ये गवर्नर के बंगलों से आया बोला अच्छा आप इधर पैंतीस साल से कितनी बार देखा आपने इसको पहली बार देखा तो पहली बार पैंतीस साल से आप इधर रह रहे हो तो गवर्नर बंगलों से उसको आज ही आने का था सुबह सात बजे और इधर इतना सारा बिल्डिंग है इतने सारे डेवोटे थे उनके उधर बिल्डिंग में क्यों नहीं गया हमारे इधर ही क्यों आए वो आज सुबह ही क्यों आया सात बजे आपको मिलने के लिए because you know gopana probably tells me that abhij bhai bahut dikhta hai so i said aaj to aapko main pura parda par sakta hu ki i witness hai na main baldev prabhu tara gopana prabhu khud aur chauta guru gorang ko yoga kar raha tha usne bhi dekha to char i witness hai to main kaha abhi to aap isko disprove karo so he said he did keep him quiet then baldev prabhu kada kya purport hai sahi hai main bola this is a this is a purport hanuman ji came to see him लॉजिकली समी को नहीं नहीं गवर्नर बंगलू से आया उसका खाने को नहीं मिला रहा उधर इधर आ गया जो भी है बट माई क्वेश्चन इज वाई ओनली ऑन राम नवमी डे थर्टी फाइव ईयर्स में एक बार भी नहीं आया और आज के दिन नहीं आने का था और फिर तो गोपीनाथ पर रूम के उधर ही आके उनको ही विवेव करके जाने का था बिकॉज गॉन फर्दर एक्सप्लोर द हाउस नो दर्ड फ्लोर हाँ काफ में मेरे को थोड़ा यू नो झाप के गया कि तू मेरे को फूल दे रहा था मेरे को चप्पल से मारने वाला था करके तो अभी हनुमान जी थे वो तो गया ऊपर ना ना समझे में से नहीं नहीं लॉजिकली साइंटिफिकली ये कोइंसिडेंस है ना आई से ओके इवन इफ इट इज कोइंसिडेंस योर थियरी यू कीप बट बाय कीप बाय बिलीविंग माय थियरी व्हाट इज हैपन माय फेथ इन हनुमान जी इंक्रीज माय रीडिंग ऑफ रामायण माय एप्रिसिएशन फॉर रामायण इंक्रीज एंड आई बिकेम मोर जॉयफुल सिंस लास्ट टू वीक्स आई एम ब्लिसफुल व्हेन आई एम लुकिंग एट राधा गोपीनाथ प्रो आई एम थिंकिंग अरे बाप रे तो हनुमान जी के खास है <laughs> इनके साथ पंगा नहीं लेने <laughs> So last week we had a meeting our temple council chair and I he said something which I didn't agree at all. I said, "Kya karu ji?" No, no, no. Yar, Anuman ji ke paakshad hai. So you suddenly respect for the person increases, na? No? Nee, you see him differently then. Aaj Anuman ji aake aisa wave karke good class bolke ja rahe. Matlab kuch khas baat nahi hoga. See what I'm saying is this is how we have to choose our reality. And if you choose the right, if the way you choose it, the, that way you get reciprocation. So in our lives, there are so many instances when we could see Krishna's hand, if you want, or you could see it is see those who say it's all scientific, logical explanation. I'll just ask a simple question. You ask the scientists, where did everything come? You ask the devotee, how did everything come from? We'll say we have whole science of Bhagavat from Krishna, from Krishna Brahma, and all those. Even from Krishna, we have all the whole. You know the expansions in the spiritual world, then Karuna that Shaya Karbo that everything is logically explained. So they say ultimately where it is come from? They say it come from Krishna, God. They say not scientists. Okay, you give a scientific explanation. Where did everything come from? They say everything has come from. You know they give different different chants, theory, all that Big Bang. Where did the Big Bang come from? Finally, you ask them ultimately everything came from where? You know what is the scientific answer? Everything has begun from where ultimately? It has come from a point which is infinitesimal in size, in finite density, in finite temperature, which is physically indescribable, mathematically unverifiable, and beyond all conceptions of space and time. <laughs> This is the scientific definition of where everything came from. Is this scientific? ये तो वर्ड जनरली है पूरा दिस इज अ साइंटिफिक आंसर वेयर डिड एवरीथिंग कम फ्रॉम इट केम फ्रॉम अ पॉइंट विद इनफाइनाइट डेंसिटी एंड इनफाइनाइट टेंपरेचर एंड इनफिनिट स्मॉल इन साइज व्हिच इज फिजिकली इनडिस्क्राइबेबल मैथमेटिकली अनवेरिफाइबल एंड बियॉन्ड ऑल कंसेप्शंस ऑफ स्पेस एंड टाइम अरे सच बोलो ना भगवान ने बनाया 
हमको मालूम नहीं है ऐसा बोलो सो 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 बैक द सेम पॉइंट चूज सो वी आर हैप्पी चूजिंग कृष्ण इफ यू आस्क डार्स ओके हाउ डिड एवरीथिंग कम इट्स ऑल अनुमान प्रमाण डार्स लेटर इज दिसंबर ट्वेंटी एक्सप्लेन हाउ द ब्लू वेल एस कम दोल द बैर भालू काला रंग का बालू वो उसमें पानी में वो स्विमिंग कर रहा था मछली पकड़ने के लिए मुंह उखोल के ऐसा करते करते बहुत साल निकल गया एंड दैट बेर बिकेम वेल दिस इज कंप्लीट दिस इज ऑल स्पेकुलेशन सो देर फोर वी कैन जस्ट एक्यूज हरे कृष्णा डिवोटीज ऑफ बींग यू नो फैंटेस्टिक कारण वो आप लोग अच्छा फैंटेस्टिक तेरे देते हो नहीं we have chosen a reality that brings us closer to eternity because by remembering hanuman ji krishna seeing that eternal principle everywhere we are able to connect to a dimension beyond our temporary world of suffering so since that day i am telling you this is when hanuman jayanti 2 weeks ago no ha since last 2 weeks 9th today is what 20 30th 17th 17th 2 weeks ago Yeah, last so twelve days blissful life, you know. So, so therefore, I'm telling you, if we keep our eyes and ears open, there is one exercise I we do often. How did Krishna show up today? If you if you answer this question every day or at least once a week, how did Krishna show up this week? You'll get amazing answers from this. If you keep your eyes and ears open, you'll get to see how Krishna is showing up. So therefore, in this verse which we have taken today. Uh, verse number twenty-one. Vishma is telling Krishna is there in everyone's heart, and proper direction is put. We have to see Krishna everywhere, and let's see what more Vishma says about uh, Krishna. He is glorifying. Remember this section eighteen twenty-four is glorification of Krishna, the supreme Lord. So text number twenty-two. Please repeat. साक्षाइंग For I am His unflinching servitor. Yes, so, the supreme Lord. Yeah. For before we read the purport, so here is saying that now he is expressing gratitude that Krishna is coming to me as I am leaving this body. So in that gratitude is expressing, and let's see what short Shri Prabhupada writes in the purport. The supreme Lord, the absolute personality of Godhead, Shri Krishna, although equal to everyone, is still more inclined to His unflinching devotee, who is completely surrendered. and knows no one else as his protector and master having unflinching faith in the supreme lord as one's protector friend and master is the natural condition of eternal life a living entity is so made by the will of the almighty that he is almost happy when placing himself in a condition of absolute dependence the opposite tendency is the cause of fall down the living entity Has this tendency of falling down by dint of his mis identifying himself as fully independent to Lord to Lord it over the material world. The root cause of all troubles is there in false egoism. Egoism. One must not worship the Lord in all circumstances. The appearance of Lord Krishna as the death bed of Vishwaji is due to his being an unflinching devotee of the Lord. Arjuna had some bodily relation with Krishna because the Lord happened to be his maternal cousin, but Bhishma had no such bodily relation. Therefore, the cause of attraction was due to the intimate relation of the soul. Yet, because the relation of the body is very pleasing and natural, the Lord is more pleased when He is addressed as the son of Maharaj Nanda, the son of Yashoda, the lover of Radharani. This affinity might. By body relation with the Lord is another feature of reciprocating loving service with the Lord. 
Bhishma Dev is conscious of this sweetness of transcendental humor, and therefore he likes to address the Lord as Vijaya Shik, Parka Shik, Vijaya Sake, Parka Sake, Parka Sake, etc. etc. Exactly like Nanda Nandana or Yashoda Nanda, the best way to establish our relation in transcendental sweetness is to approach him through his recognized devotees. One should not try to establish the relation directly. There must be a via medium which is transparent and competent to lead us to the right path. So here also we see Prabhupada is writing about how Krishna likes to be connected with his devotees. And he is giving different names. Krishna likes to be addressed by a name connected to his devotee. And the last line also, Srila Prabhupada emphatically says, one should not try to establish the relation directly with Krishna. There has to be a via medium of devotees. So this is the way we connect with Krishna. You know, the devotee is indispensable. In, in Krishna consciousness, we, we, we have a direct relationship with Krishna. We want to go back to Krishna, but we can connect with Krishna only through the medium of a devotee. Because Krishna likes that. Actually, after coming to Krishna consciousness, especially in the last few years that I've been here, I've realized three things, uh, the three things which are commonly discussed in Krishna consciousness about happiness. Second, we discuss about success. And third, we discuss about association. My definition of all three has gone through a major change in the last 25 years. So initially we thought, you know, Hare Krishna means uh, we'll always be happy. Chant Hare Krishna and be happy, happy, happy. And association, just associate with devotees. Just hold, be with devotees, everything will be okay. And uh, success, okay, we have opened so many temples, so many book distributions, so many things have happened. But now I realize all three are actually, they mean something else. They mean something much deeper. Like for example, happiness. Happiness, you know, we look for, unfortunately, many times, relief from suffering. And we think Hare Krishna should also give me that by definition of happiness for many of us is pleasure. And we expect pleasure from the Krishna conscious process. And if you want, we, there is bead bag and there is smartphone. If you want pleasure, which one, which of the two will give you pleasure? Smartphone, which will give you happiness? Bead bag. What has happened? Initially, I was in Hare Krishna, I wanted a kick chanting Hare Krishna, Hare ecstasy, chai, ecstasy. Now I realize that Hare Krishna chanting will give us deep contentment. It's like a medicine. And we cannot experience deep satisfaction in Krishna consciousness unless we learn the principle of tolerating, unless we learn the principle of embracing pain. Unfortunately, nobody teaches us this. Everybody is teaching us how to reduce suffering and increase pleasure. And it is natural from childhood we have been taught how to reduce misery and increase happiness. Mm -hmm. But at some point of time we have to realize that there is no way you can circumvent this principle. Mm -hmm. We need to learn the principle of embracing pain. Oh, Koi shortcut nahi hai. Matras parshastu kondeya shita ushna sukha dukkhada agama paino nitya stam stitiksha subharata. Toleration, tolerance is very, very important. And nobody teaches us tolerance. So if you want to experience spiritual happiness, we have to learn to tolerate material happiness and material distress. This is an integral part of understanding of happiness. Second is success. You know, when we were young devotees, success meant getting more book distribution, opening new temples, making, getting more and more devotees. Now we realize, no, if this is a criteria for success, then many of us will get into depression. Not everybody will be successful. Success, Srila Prabhupada says in one lecture, very famous lecture of Srila Prabhupada, Los Angeles, 1971, July. Srila Prabhupada says that pastime of mm -hmm. South Indian Brahmin for reading Bhagavad Gita and Chaitanya Mahaprabhu saw him and Chaitanya Mahaprabhu said, you are reading Bhagavad Gita, you are uh, illiterate, 
Bhair, how can you read Bhagavad Gita related? He said, my Guru has ordered me, so I am reading. Jaitanya Mahaprabhu said, but you are crying. So, this is the exact word Shri Prabhupada said in that lecture. That Brahman told Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, I am not reading. I am not crying. I am feeling. Chaitanya Mahaprabhu said, what is that feeling? The Brahman said, when I am feeling that this is Krishna, he has become driver. He has become charioteer of his devotee, Arjuna. When I feel that Krishna is so nice, Krishna is so kind, I start crying. Then Srila Prabhupada says, so this is success in Krishna consciousness. When we feel Krishna is kind, Krishna is nice. So if you, feel, if you want to know what is success, if you can feel this, you, know, you, have, to, you have to meditate on this, on this principle. Krishna is very kind, Krishna is very nice. If this feeling rises in your heart, that means you are successful. Congratulations, you don't need the world to give you a certificate. Prabhuji, you are successful Bhakti. Nobody can give you this certificate. You ask yourself, do you feel Krishna is nice? Krishna is very kind. We have to feel this. Ena kena prakarena, some or the other. When I was taking this in one children's program in London, so one girl said, Prabhuji, but I don't feel Krishna is so nice, Krishna is so kind because he's driving Arjuna's chariot. I said, no, you should feel Krishna is so nice, Krishna is so kind because he's driving your chariot also. We are also, our chariot also, Krishna is only driving. How many of you have been on a road or train or plane where you felt you had a close shave from an accident that could have been fatal? Anybody? Mm -hmm. uh, see? कभी ना कभी कार का एक्सीडेंट होते होते बच गया मरते मरते बच गए मतलब कौन चला रहा था वो वो वाज ड्राइविंग द चैरिट कृष्णा सो यू कैन फील कृष्णा इज सो काइंड कृष्णा इज सो नाइस सो वी हैव टू सम ऑफ फील दिस देन वी आर सक्सेसफुल सो देयर आर थ्री पॉइंट वन इज हैप्पीनेस हैप्पीनेस स्पिरिचुअल हैप्पीनेस वी कैन नॉट एक्सपीरियंस अनलेस वी लर्न टू एम्ब्रेस पेन सेकंड Success is when, success is not in opening more temples and getting more funds. Success is when you feel Krishna is nice, Krishna is kind. And third association. Association also, you know, when initially association we should be together. All Vaishnava should come together. But come together and do what? They fight. <laughs> association at the lowest level is socializing. You know, going to Govindas, having party. Sometimes they would just come together and go for a movie also together. So they, are they having association? Association at the lowest level is socializing. Going for parties, marriages, yatras together. Hari bol, maja gaya. So that is not association. There is a higher level of association, which is this, where we are hearing and chanting together. When we are hearing and chanting, that is higher level of association. But there is even deeper level of association, even more than that which is hearing and chanting an association that is there. But when we actually depend, when I'm in my heart of heart, when I depend on the blessings of other devotees, that means I'm associating. So if I can develop that mood that I need blessings of, you know, Prabhuji, this Mataji, I need blessings. So if I'm in that mood, then I will know how to associate. I will never hurt you. I will never... I will always think of pleasing you. I will always think of... Because we need blessings. We can't do bhakti on our own. So we have to cultivate this mood. Then we are actually associate. So we, we can learn from this section of Bhishma's prayers that we need to cultivate the mood of depending on devotees for their blessings. So today we have taken two verses. Verse number 21 and verse number 22. And in 21, we discussed the theme of seeing Krishna everywhere. And in 22, we saw the importance of understanding the, associate, the principle of association of devotees. And also learning how success, happiness and association has to be at a much deeper level than simply externally seen. So then there are two more verses in this section. We can take it up next time.
23 and 24 but anybody has any comments or questions regarding today's class you can please share yes bro you said that you should see this man everyone that's what you have to say you see this man a terrorist in the vehicles no we we discussed this once see sun if you're standing in front of sun there is light what is darkness darkness also comes from sun in one sense when you are away from the sun there is darkness so how we see krishna there is that there is absence of krishna there is the, the principle of krishna is not there somebody has forgotten krishna that is why this has happened there is there is a gross violation of the principle that krishna has given so we remember we don't see krishna we don't see it as approved by krishna we see it as a cause of forgetfulness of krishna and krishna's love being disconnected from krishna's instructions so that darkness is a grim reminder of how we are disconnected from the lord so we don't see krishna in that act no this is an intellectual and emotional question these are people ask you know so like there is a plane crash oh this is law of karma did they deserve to die these are the kind of questions and this questions are no answer because <laughs> they are emotional angle and then you are expecting a logical answer the anything you say will create more mm-hmm. negative emotions so it's very very painful so it is not uh, ordained by the lord it is for us to you know like um, it is for us to rectify the situation as responsible human beings we need to ensure that there is harmony there is adherence to the universal laws that krishna has given that is called dharma dharma centered living so dharma comes from the root of dr dhatu which means order harmony dr dharti maintaining So there are certain principles and laws which Krishna has given us, which helps to ensure harmony and balance in the universe. So when all of us align to our dharma, the roles and responsibilities assigned to us, then there is peace and harmony. So this is Krishna's order, Krishna's universe. So when this is violated, we see how there is a disconnect from Krishna. When we say, "See Krishna in day-to-day life," we are talking about. the more manageable issues in fact you know there are a lot of issues where which is not as gross or as painful as this if we learn to see krishna in good times then we learn to see krishna even in terrible tragedies but how it's beyond me to explain right now but like when devotees die in a air crash you know when the devotees died in a plane crash few years back i remember his holiness radhana swami maharaj said in this world people go through action reaction people get what they what action we do but when devotee of krishna goes through something like this we should know that devotees don't get what they deserve they get what they need to come closer to krishna so something was there by which they came closer to krishna how did they actually come closer to krishna we don't know so like that the laws the laws is lord has made but that the laws take you now it's like saying everything happens by god's will so then i drive at 130 km per hour it's a choice we make a choice so we have misused the choice so then the lord's laws in fact maharaj radhana swami maharaj says you know when we sit in the car he was saying the moment you drive beyond 80 km we are going to pune so he told the driver 
So somebody said, nursing RT, let's all change nursing RT. So then Maharaj said, if you drive more than 80 kilometers per hour, nursing, they will leave the car. <laughs> 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 so we can't expect. We have to follow the laws also, and then Lord will take care also. Lord, yeah. yes, Anusha, you wanted to say something. Yeah. My question is pertaining to associations. Now that you know, uh, we are talking about devotee association, we can do three exams. But you know, when we step in the outer world, so we have always heard that we should go and give our association and not take the association. But uh, when it's still it difficult, you know, how do we? I mean, there are office gatherings and everything, and we, we can't straight away say no and. We also want to be, we also don't want to look very hostile over there by just not doing it. So, yeah, there are, I'm sure there are nice people there and you, you associate with them, learn from them. I don't say anything wrong. And there is the principle of Krishna consciousness even there. I, I know so many non devotees who are wonderful human beings, you know. They may not be Hare Krishna devotees, but I don't say anything wrong in associating with them. So, uh, and also associate with devotees because that's part of your dharma. You know, if you're working, if you're doing some services and you just can't be, you're living in the society, you can't just be not part of the society. So, go along, but give your heart to Krishna. Allow your life to be handled by Krishna. Krishna will take you, Krishna will help you navigate through that beautifully. You will discover amazing friends there. And amazing relationships that you learn, you will grow, you will evolve. And you'll also learn some people are nasty. And you'll go through your success, failure. Material world success, failure, both are failure only in one sense. But there is no Krishna there. But you learn and you'll go, go through, grow through all of that. And what happens? You'll see when you're successful, the whole world will come to recognize you. Agar aap safal ho, to dunya aapko janti hai. Or if you are successful, you know the world. Then you realize, oh, I failed. And then you realize, the world may... Okay, if you had a choice, the world knows you. Or second choice is, you know the whole world. What would you prefer? <laughs> Knowing the world. You would prefer the world knows you. See, the world knows you, but the world knows you only for your... What, you know, for your success. But you don't know the world. <laughs> in fact, um, it's better sometimes to be in this world, struggle, you know, meet so-called, you know, your office colleagues and go through all the challenges, handling them and coming back, getting frustrated, feeling. So, so you you learn and grow and you learn about the world much better. And uh, I personally think. I mean, sometimes devotees, they feel frustrated. They say, probably it's a life. I feel I'm a failure. I say, great. Because now, you, you know the world. If you are successful, the world would have known you. you see, when you're successful, there's a CCTV camera on, on you. But CCTV camera is a camera. It's a machine. But imagine a camera that speaks. Camera that says, hey, idiot. <laughs> or camera, camera starts passing judgment. When you are successful, you are facing a CCTV camera that is passing constant judgments. This world is very harsh. But when you fail, it is like you have been given an invisible, you, you have been given a ring. Imagine you have a magic ring. You put that ring on your finger and you can become invisible. Imagine you had a ring and you have, as soon as you put it, you become invisible and you go around with people and you can hear what they speak. You can understand what they are doing. So failure and suffering of the material world gives you that magic ring. <laughs> it helps you go around in this world and understand this dunya hai kya? So yeah, I know what you're feeling uh, that are we here in the classes say, with devotees, but but when I'm in this material world, there is so much of inadequacy and so much of challenges. But that inadequacy is okay. आसमान में मत ढूंढ सपनों को सपनों के लिए तो जमीन जरूरी है अन पोइट सेड अनाइस स्टेटमेंट आसमान में मत ढूंढ सपनों को सपनों के लिए जमीन जरूरी है सब कुछ मिल जाए तो क्या मजा जीने के लिए कमी भी जरूरी है 
<laughs> there has to be some kami, some inadequacy, some. And then when you go through that, what happens is you go through suffering. In this material world, when you have your responsibilities, job, colleagues, neighbors, you go to their parties, you feel sometimes so dry and they are talking all nonsense, but you have to, compulsions are there. And then you're like, your heart is anchoring to be in temple, to be with devotees, but you have to be there. And sometimes you enjoy it also. And then you regret later. All that churning you go through, suffering you go through. At the end of it, you realize you're insignificant. See, we are all insignificant. And I often give this example of that, you know, that cardamom, Elaiji, chota sa hai wo. But it has the power to give fragrance. Elaiji ke danon sa mukaddar hai apna. Elaiji ke danon sa mukaddar hai apna. Mahak utni bikri pise gaye jitna. <laughs> जितना पीसे जाओगे उतना ही वो इलायची जो है महक स्प्रेड करेगा तो दैट्स आवर लाइफ सो सो वी हैव टू गो थ्रू दैट बट व्हाट आई सजेस्ट इज यू नो इन दिस वर्ल्ड एज यू आर लिविंग योर रिस्पांसिबिलिटीज विद नॉन डिवोटीज फॉलो थ्री प्रिंसिपल्स प्रैक्टिकली एंड यू विल सी योर लाइफ बिकमिंग अमेजिंगली वंडरफुल फर्स्ट इज आई कॉल इट एज 3s फर्स्ट एस इज गो डीप इन साधना If you're making your chanting and hearing strong, then when you're associating with all this friend, now you'll be able to. Like today, before we entered the class, I was speaking about two realities: eternal reality and my reality, my reality of my suffering, my life. You'll be able to na- navigate through that if you spend some quality time in the eternal reality. It's very, very important. Sadhana karo to phal milta hai. Aaj nahi to kal milta hai. Jitna gehra. कुआ हो उतना मीठा जल मिलता है सो एज यू डिग डीपर इन दैल यू गेट स्वीटर वॉटर सो एज यू स्पेंड क्वालिटी टाइम कमिंग टू टेम्पल चैंटिंग एसोसिएटिंग विद डिज हियरिंग रीडिंग भागवतम अटेंडिंग क्लासेस एज यू डिग डीपर यू गेट स्वीटर रियलाइजेशन एंड यू बेबल टू नेविगेट टू दिस दिस इज वन सेकेंड इन ऑल योर सोशल डिजिंग गिव लव बी काइंड बिकॉज दिस वर्ल्ड इज स्टार and kindness is a language you know which you don't have to be a devotee to speak that anybody understands it everybody understands it and you don't have to wait for world to give you love and happiness to give you for you to give love many times devotees make this mistake you know they think are mere pa to acha nahi ho raha hai uh, so how can i give love don't wait you just even if you are going through misery even if you are going through suffering just be nice to other people and see the difference muskurane ki wajah na dhoondo varna zindagi yun hi kat jayegi kabhi be wajah bhi muskura ke dekho zindagi bhi aapke sath muskurayegi you will be amazed to see how world is also smiling and everybody is good all the you are suffering because you are giving love you get it back this is the second very very important principle what is the first sadhana deeper second social dealing sciencely and third very important part of social dealing speech muh band rakho kaan aur aankh khula rakho then you see the magic that happens in all your social dealings parties office do aankh diya hai bhagwan ne do kaan diya hai muh ek hi diya matlab kam bolo zyada suno dekho unka sab you know you learn a lot ये इसको मुंह बंद रखो बस ज्यादा सी वेन आई वॉज वर्किंग बिफोर आई जॉइन टेम्पल आई शुड नॉट टेल पीपल अबाउट इसकॉन दिस टू बी वेरी क्यूरियस ऑन थर्टी फर्स्ट डिसंबर दे ऑल वॉन्टेड टू पार्टी एंड एट एंड दे थॉट यू नो दे गो अर्ली एट सिक्स फाइव ओ क्लॉक एंड दे थॉट आई डू द रिमेनिंग वर्क बट आई लेफ्ट फोर ओ क्लॉक सिंह हमारा हरे कृष्णा का पार्टी है क्या पार्टी होता है आपको नहीं समझेगा आई शू ऑलवेज टेल दम आई शू लिसन टू दम टॉक टू दम बट नॉट से एनीथिंग But when I was leaving, finally they all gerot me. They wanted to know, and then I gave them solid one hour lecture. <laughs> so, उसमें भी दो लोग devotee भी बने. So point is, बोलने का कम बोलने का, सुनने का. हमारे क्या वो preaching का over enthusiasm में ना. We burn lot of bridges because we are insecure in that association. So we force Hari Krishna on them, and we make a fool of ourselves only. <laughs> so I say. मुंह में जबान सब रखते हैं पर कमाल वो करते हैं जो उसे संभाल के रखते हैं <laughs> मुंह बंद रखो <laughs> है ना तो बोलना बच्चा कभी बोलना सीखता है दो दो साल लगता है 
इंसान को बोलना सीखने में दो तीन साल लग जाता है पर क्या बोलना है वो सीखने में पूरी जिंदगी निकल जाती है <laughs> तो मैंने देखा कितने डेवेटिस गड़बड़ करते हैं मुंह खोल देते हैं कुछ भी उल्टा सीधा बोल देते हैं ऑफिस में बात नहीं देर मिजरेबल वो ऑफिस में भी मन 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 नहीं कर रहा है and they are frustrated so i say i say do these three things be kind to others keep your mouth shut and do nice sadhan and then even if you have to go to their parties it's okay in fact krishna will send such nice people nice friends like in our so amazing i went to anand mahaprabhu house once and tulsi mata ji and they were, after taking prasad and i talked to both of them and then one of his friends came anand mahaprabhu is very close friend He has been with his father. His father was this man's father was a CA for his father, and he is now a CA for Anand Mahapur. And he's not a devotee. And they're very close friends. And I'm like, and they have been together since what forty, fifty years now. <laughs> and they're like pakka family friends. And I saw how probably smart he's kept that friendship, although he's not a Hare Krishna devotee at all. But you can't say Anand Mahapur is leading a compromised life. Just yesterday, his class was uploaded. Spiritual life also law of gravity applies to our class on how that got to be intense in bhakti. So obviously he is walking his talk, but he knows how to live in this world. So he has his own company, lowest turnover. Nobody has left last thirty, forty, forty years. People are working with him. मतलब <laughs> he knows how to live in this world. So ये सब लोगों से थोड़ा सीखने का, ये smart devotees हैं इनसे सीखने का. ठीक है? हरे कृष्ण. आज तो शायरी का कमी तो होगी हो गया <laughs> चलो थैंक यू वेरी मच फॉर योर काइंड अटेंशन ग्रंथराज श्रीमद भागवतम की जय सी यू नेक्स्ट वीक श्री प्रोपाद की जय थैंक यू ऑनलाइन डिबोटीज ऑनलाइन